Do you know the fruits of the Spirit? There, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and tomatoes. Well, the last one might be a different kind of fruit. Tomato, tomato. To help us remember, we have a song about what's a fruit of the Spirit and what's just a fruit. So let's sing about the fruits of the Spirit. Our first one is a coconut. Two, three. The fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. The fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. If you want to be a coconut, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Next up, we have a watermelon, or as I like to say it, watermelon. Two, three. The fruit of the Spirit's not a watermelon. The fruit of the Spirit's not a watermelon. If you want to be a watermelon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Last but not least, we have the cherry. Two, three. The fruit of the Spirit's not a cherry. The fruit of the Spirit's not a cherry. If you want to be a cherry, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Oh, hey, Pop Kids. Nathan here, and all month long, we've been talking about commitment. Commitment, making a plan and putting it into practice. So I've been training for a 5K race, and guess what? It's only a week away. So I'm a little nervous about it. You see, I haven't told anyone about this. This will be my very first 5K ever. My friends convinced me that I would enjoy running a 5K, but they've been running 5Ks for years, so I figured they know what they're talking about. We're actually meeting up tomorrow to have kind of a pre-race get-together, and I have so many questions I need to ask them. H how long does it take to run a 5K? Will my legs hurt when the race is over? What exactly are we running from? So that should be fun. Or what if they get tired of all my questions? What if they ask me questions? Will they expect me to know as much as they do about races? I need to practice what I'm going to say. Perfect. This is my practice buddy. So, Nathan, what is your favorite part of running? Uh, the, the, the running part. How many marathons have you run this year? Uh, this year? <laughs> None. If, if you were running on a track headed west at 12 kilometers per hour and a train 127 miles away was headed in the opposite direction at 84 miles per hour, at what part of the track would you and the train meet? Hmm? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? I don't know. I told you that, but... Yeah, I'm a little overwhelmed. Maybe I'll just stand next to the wall and not say anything? Hopefully today's story will help. It's about saying what's on your mind, even when you don't have all the answers. See you soon. Yes, see you soon.
today's episode of Say What? what? We are taking a look at a conversation Jesus had with his friends, you know, the disciples, which we can find in the book of Matthew in the Bible. Right. Well, Jesus and his disciples had traveled all the way from Galilee to Caesarea Philippi. And Jesus asked some very important questions to his friends, those disciples. The first question that Jesus asked his disciples that day was, who, who do people say the Son of Man is? In other words, Jesus asked, who, who do the other people say that I am? So now it's time for the game. So for the first question, I want you to guess the wrong answer. There's gonna be three right answers, and then I want you to guess the wrong answer. Think you can do that? And I will give you seven seconds to think about that, and then I'll reveal the correct wrong answer. All right, keep track of how many questions you answer correctly by holding up a finger each time you get one right. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Now, how do you think the disciples answered the question, who do others say I am? Did they say A, Elijah, B, Chewbacca, C, John the Baptist, or D, Jeremiah. Seven seconds, go. Okay, time's up. Which one of the disciples did not say that? Well, if you guessed B, Chewbacca, you're correct, yay! You can put up one finger, and I'll keep count of on your own of how many you get right. Now you see, when Jesus asked the disciples, who do people say I am? The disciples responded by saying, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. People had been comparing Jesus to many important figures from Jewish history. People who worked miracles and spoke about God's words. But Jesus was so much more. Okay, you ready to play again? All right, here we go. Get ready, here's the next question. Jesus looked at his friends in Matthew 16, verse 15, and asked them, but what about you? Who do you say I am? One of the disciples spoke up and answered Jesus' question. Which disciple was it? A, Spider-Man, B, Moses, C, the Roman Emperor, or D, Peter? I'll give you some time to think. Go. Okay, which disciple spoke up to answer Jesus's question? If you said D, Peter, you're correct. And you can put up another finger. Way to go! Okay, now we need to know what Peter said to Jesus. Remember, Jesus had just asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? So the next question is, what did Peter say to Jesus? Okay, are you ready? What did Peter say to Jesus? And this time there's two correct answers. Ready? A, you are nice. B, you are awesome. C, you are the Messiah, or D, you are the son of the living God. Now remember, this time there are two correct answers. Which two do you think are right? Here you go, seven seconds. All right. Which two answers did Peter say? Well, if you said both C and D, you are correct. Oh! How many do you have right now so far? How many fingers do you have up? Great, okay. Well, in Matthew 16, verse 16, the Bible tells us that Peter says, you are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. Whoa, Jesus was very impressed with Peter's answers. And 
he knew who had helped Peter. Who helped Peter get that right answer? So Jesus told Peter who showed him the truth. So now that's setting up our last question. So here's our final question, ready? Who showed Peter the truth about Jesus? You ready for this? Was it A, God, B, Chewbacca, C, the Roman Emperor, or D, a friendly postman? I'll give you some time to think. You probably won't need much time for this one. Go. Time's up. All right, let's recap what we've learned so far. Peter knew the truth. Jesus is the Son of God. Well, who showed Peter the truth about Jesus? If you said a God, you're right! God! God showed Peter who Jesus was. So in Matthew chapter 16, verse 17 and 18, the Bible says, No mere human showed this to you. My Father in heaven showed it to you. And that wasn't all Jesus said to Peter. Jesus told him this, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church. You see, Peter had the courage to speak up and to say what he knew was true. Later, Peter would go on to share that truth about Jesus with everyone he met. You know, it's important to remember that we can talk about God too. We can share the truth of who Jesus is, just like Peter did. We can also talk with each other and ask questions to learn more about what we believe. So the bottom line this week is an invitation to all of us. Practice talking about God. Okay, so that concludes today's game. How many fingers do you have up? Good job. Great work, everybody. Thanks for playing Say, Say what? what? And remember, you can practice your faith when you practice talking about God. Dear God, thank you for Peter's example that shows us how to boldly share what we know to be true about Jesus. Please give us the courage to talk about you with the people you put into our lives. Help us ask questions and learn more and more about you every day. We love you. Thank you for loving us. Amen. You know when you have something you really like, you like to tell people about it. Maybe it's a game that you really like to play. You tell people about the game. And maybe it's a pizza you really like to eat. Well, we tell people about the pizza. It's the same way this week when we're talking about practice talking about God. Take the opportunities that you have to tell other people about this God that is so important to you. And the more we practice talking about God, the easier it gets to talk about God. All right, we'll see you next week.